Hello, Mary. Meet you. It's just Michelle Marie Delaney, and today, of course, we have a couple of things to talk about, uh, including things that are not so nice. But we might as well bring them up. Courtesy of a local thief, whoever you are. Thanks for the topic. What is the topic? The topic is theft. I wanted to explain something to a lot of people who have. Never wonder, probably wonder what you do if someone steals your cell phone. Um, they, person in, we don't know who it is, that's all I know. We don't know who it is. It could be anybody. Um, came in and saw my Alcatel One Touch Evolve, saw that it was not activated. So that it still had like new minty condition because I never activated the phone. And um, decided that he or she, whoever they are again, I don't know who they are, uh, decided that now they could probably fence the thing. And uh, I thought maybe I could have left it at the bank, but me, let me chew down it and uh, we don't think so. No. Okay. Um, let me explain what we're going to talk about with that. Okay. Um, first of all, theft of phones, cell phones especially, is an extremely common problem in the world today. Um, people, um, it was uh, it, fairly, inex I say fairly, I didn't say it totally inexpensive. It was fairly inexpensive, the Android phone. Um, but sometimes it doesn't matter how much it costs. It's just the principle of the thing. It's where there's a lot of emotions get involved, and I'm certainly not immune to this. Um, so the first thing I want to talk to you about is something that Apple on its own had begun to do uh, with iOS 6 and um, later. And, and that is what we're going to discuss. What can you do if someone steals your phone? Well, the most, there's a thing called, um, this applies to, uh, for GSM and LTE phones. Unfortunately, there really is not a database, um, that's consistently is organized for CDMA or IDEN phones. So, um, we're going to talk about the GSM database first. It is called the IMEI, which is International Mobile equipment number or identification and if you look you can't see it so i'm sorry it's a little small I won't zoom through here. if i take this phone barrier i can show you something here you will see on every every gsm device there is an imei and if this is ever reported as lost or stolen and this number is entered into a database as lost or stolen goods. It doesn't matter what whoever bought it. They will never, ever be able to activate this device ever again. They must have throw it in the trash. It will be useless to you. I don't even think the original owner of the device can reactivate it, although I do not know about that. Um, that may, may or not be the case. So um, this is the second thing I was going to show you today. So, um, but let me get back to the, uh, the database business and then we'll talk about that. Um, Apple and their iOS 6 and newer has, you, through the iCloud, you can actually set your cell phone up to, again, if it's lost or stolen, you have the ability, if it's turned on, to track it down. And you can also erase it. Totally, poof, all your stuff, all your personal contacts, all everything. The phone will be erased, as well as you can set a hardware lock on it. Now, a couple of years, um, just about last year, the local police departments around the United States and the Federal Bureau of Investigation, um, James Comey, was extremely upset that they cannot crack Apple's lock. Well, 
I really don't know if that's quite true, but that's what he says, all right? Um, and like another rep uh, representative said in, in Congress, he said, you know what? He said, um, if we so things are NSA spying programs like PRISM and uh, all the other stuff that we're doing, then we're doing this kind of crap. We would never have had people let, have feel a sense of lack of trust in the U.S. government. Um, so, in the case of the Apple iCloud locking, it's, and I think Android offers something similar. Um, you, only you can unlock your phone. So, if you do find it, let's say, for example, really it wasn't lost at all. Maybe you had left it in a drawer somewhere, or maybe in, you know, you left it in one of your pairs of pants. And, um, now, because you locked it, okay, you know your, you know your passcode, okay? So it's going to ask you when you power it up, please enter your passcode. Yeah, you already know it, okay? It's the password you already know and the user ID you already know. And uh, once you do that, once you type it, it's unlocked. This is very different than the IMEI database of blacklisted phones. That database is forever. If you ever have something really stolen, a phone, uh, a tablet, uh, a hotspot device like this one, which is going to be our next topic, um, you can um, make somebody's life miserable because nobody can ever unlock that device ever again and they will never be able to use ever again because once it's in the database it's stolen it's gone you know it's it's just good for scrap pieces that's all it's worth um whereas at least the itunes situation i mean with the icloud it's not quite so bad if you if you as i say you find the phone and you know your phone is your phone you know the code you log into the phone then you're all set, okay? And you can go ahead and rest assured that you can use it again. And it will never be truly locked, although you, there is a way to do that too. All right, now today's next item we're going to talk about is, so I don't have the SIM chip for this so um, yet. It's coming tomorrow. So let me just show this to you. I'm sorry, I got food on this. Um... This is a T-Mobile hotspot. This is a Samsung model. Um, this is a, a very nice unit. Um, let's see if I have the model number conveniently down here somewhere on paper. No, I do not. I have to just power up to see what it is. Um, actually, I might have the information. Yes, I do. Um, no, that's not it. Okay. Um, this is a. Well, this is. This is a Samsung hotspot. If I power this up, okay, if it's actually, since it's really a phone, without the phone parts, okay, it's just specifically for that purpose, it's a hotspot. It doesn't do anything else, it does not make phone calls, it does not talk to anybody. Um, you can, we see text messages on it. Uh, come on, stop fighting me today, have we, yeah? I just had you on a little earlier. Did you put the battery back in? Yes, okay. Um... That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. You're on the wrong side! <laughs> it's an SMV100T hotspot. Um, I'm serious. I'm sorry. I had it backwards. Okay. Now, this is um, a Wi-Fi hotspot. It uses T-Mobile's LTE service. And what this will do... And I don't have a SIM in it yet. I'm getting, that's coming in the mail tomorrow. Um... When you activate this hotspot, you can see that because it does at least in part recognize the T-Mobile network, it's designed to work specifically with it. So it needs that SIM to authenticate so you can actually do data work on it. But um, you also um, may be actually able to um, snoop in on it um, without too much of a fuss, but you won't be able to do much really with it. 
But here, well, here's the cool thing I wanted to show you with this. Um, if you... A lot of times people like to tether. Um, if, like, say, for example, you have an older phone, um, it will work with um, most phones that use something called NDIS protocol, NDIS. Now, what they did, what Samsung did, I like this, this cord, it wraps around it for looks, okay? Yes, that is the cord. So you can plug this cord into two different holes. If you have, for example, a tablet that uses the bigger plug, you can plug this end here into the little, I guess Eric Manuel had to make sure I understand this. You can plug this little end into this port here, and then you can plug this into your computer port on your laptop or even on a desktop, although I'll be honest, on your desktop, the cord may seem a little short. Um, but there are extension cords. Right, as I said, it has a standard micro USB port. I don't like these ports, but oh well, I'm just, this is life, right? Um, the, likewise, if you are going to plug this into, say, the Alcatel One Touch, for example, because that's only a 3G phone, right? I can plug this in here and plug this into the Alcatel One Touch. Now, it will also allow the Alcatel One Touch to use 3G. And if you, or 4G and LTE. If you don't want to use it at all, this, this snaps the cord, just wraps it right, right down by the side again. So it looks nice and kind of camouflaged. And, oops, I want to drop it. Um, and um, T-Mobile's tethering um, service for hotspots, they got a plan that really, really will make you drill. Uh, you can get an inexpensive LTE plan the most popular plan is a $30 plan, which gives you 3 gigabytes of tethering uh, of data for hotspot use. And, of course, you will also be eligible to receive and use um, the 256 megabytes complimentary data for using your tablet or hotspot device on the T-Mobile network. So you do have the privilege of actually getting complimentary 256 megabytes of data a month that's all okay that's that's definitely is if so obviously if you don't refill the plan you may get 256 but once your 256 bytes of megabytes of data is up it will no longer work until you put a refill in it um so you can get a plan starting uh, by the day or you can get a plan that starts by the month now i happen to be Looking at the plans that we're going to be using right now, because we are experimenting with this device, we want to, um, I'm going to just power this off. Um, I always have the hardest time figuring out how to power these things off. It's a cell phone device, really. Yeah, it's a cell phone guts inside. Uh, I think I just turned it off. Oh, you just turned it off and then you just turn it back on again. Oops. <laughs> Okay, well, I, I admit, I, I am, I'm still learning how to use this. I did read the manual. I had the manual. Um, the cool thing, as I said about this, is that this will allow 10, wire, or 10 devices using Wi-Fi to connect up to this device. Okay, so you can support a maximum of 10 devices. And that means you can have 9 Wi-Fi's in one tether or whatever. Ten tops, that's all you can have. Now, actually, I wonder about something, which is, can you actually use this thing to interface with um, my router so that, again, if I take um, um, a USB, or, oh, oh shit. Um, if I take this device and I connect it into, say, um, a wireless access bridge a bridge okay and can i actually use this device to allow me to share the network throughout the whole house that's the question i i don't know the answer to that but i would say if it's possible that i don't know how much likely t-mobile is going to get a bit miffed about that 
Uh, the whole idea of these hotspots, anyway, in the first place, is to allow people who have portability but want the speed to have the ability to take their internet with them. Um, for example, business travelers who might be in a foreign city or maybe they're not near, say, like the McDonald's Wi-Fi or Starbucks and want to, or maybe they're camping and they're going to camp, so at least they know there's a T-Mobile tower nearby, so they know that they could get an LTE signal. This also supports Edge. So this supports um, several protocols as well. It supports LTE, it supports 3G HSPA um, plus HSPA, um, HSPD, HSPDA, HSPUPA, and of course uh, WCDMA, and of course um, LTE. So this is a great device for um, the person who really doesn't really give a damn about talking on the phone, but just wants to be able to use a device. This is great for campers. Like I obviously mentioned, if you are a um, full-time motor homer, you're going to love this. Um, as long as you're near a place where you can get a T-Mobile service. I bought this on eBay, believe it or not, for $29. This has a suggested retail of $129. You got a hundred bucks off. I got a hundred bucks off. It's a refurbished. It's a, it's a seller refurbished. Um, it's, um, it was clean new when I got it. Um, except obviously, like, just by touching it, I got fingerprints all over it. Um, I, I, that's, I'm not really so much worried about the fingerprints. I really am not. I just, um, buff it some more, buff it some more. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're going to try out, uh, an inexpensive, um, monthly prepaid plan and see how this works. And it looks, if it works like it's going to really seriously work very well as an alternative for frontier internet, we'll use this to connect us to T-Mobile uh, instead of using Frontier. Uh, and that might be a great choice, um, especially for the intro. Between the fact that we don't know how long it's going to take for us to get all the phone lines moves back over here again. Um, now, the next thing I wanted to tell you about is that uh, tomorrow, the new Micro Sims kits both the phone sim, which I don't need now, but I could listen about it anyways to spare, and this the data sim for this will be here. And I'm gonna explain something about the data sim and the prepaid because there is a difference. It is the difference has to do with the software that um already um uh, the authentication in the, the, the data sim because of the way it works with uh the sim systems, I don't really get all the details. I just know is that, um, you know, it's going to be a great way. I'm going to try some different things. Um, now, we also got today our airport extreme card. Now, that's now in the PowerMag G5. And we do not have the external antenna for it yet, but that has been ordered and hopefully will be here um, soon. And, um, I also wanted to know if I could find out what the type of connector that is on the back of my Mac is. Now, I actually wasn't really sure. Uh, I googled as much as I could to try to find some information of the connector on the back of the G5 for the airport. It appears to be what they call an MCX connector. Now, an MCX connector is a really small connector. Um, and one of the things you can thank the federal government for, the Federal Communications Commission for, is that they began the process of specifying standard connectors for various technologies and, and radio broadcast frequencies. That's what they do. It's why it's called the Federal Communications Commission. Um, as it means to provide a standard, just like there is a standard for electrical means plugs here in the United States, which is, um, which is run by the uh, North American Equipment Manufacturers Association, or NEMA, um, that has specified the standards for U.S. mains plugs. Just as in the U.K., there is the BS, there's the BSE. Uh, British System Engineers has their um, specifications for mains plugs, um, such as the 13 amp 
and uh, things like that. So the point is, is that there is a standard connector, and it is called the MCX connector, and there is an adapter available. And what's not that expensive, it's called the MCX2, um, MCX Mail to reverse polarity or RPSMA female. That will allow me to use one of the existing antennas I have with the Power Mac G5. I did buy the I did buy the real Power Mac G5 antenna as well. Um, so if if for some reason it doesn't work, at least I have the real thing coming, uh, so I can take a better look at the situation, connectors and things like that. Um, the connector on the card itself um, is just, I, 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 I don't know much about it, except I can tell you this. It is really, really small. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Michelle figured out the problem of why the Power Mac G5 was losing its cookies when she turned, well, unplugged the power cord. Yeah, I had the battery, I had the print battery in a backwards. Apple apparently got, had realized there was a possibility in properly installed blocking diodes to prevent damage to the battery or the computer. Thank you, Apple, for at least putting some forethought into that. I really appreciate it a lot. Um, because, unfortunately enough, the if you look at the pram connector on the machine, it, or the battery, it doesn't say plus or minus. Uh, that is one of the reasons why I was having a hard time figuring out why I couldn't get it to work. I thought I had the battery in the right way, I had it in the wrong way. Oops. Fortunately enough, um, everything's fine and my Power Mac G5 is happily recording this video and it's chugging along. Um, so tomorrow we have a couple things coming. Uh, given what's been going on at the theft at the house, uh, we are going to try to uh, tighten security down there to make sure that more items do not quietly walk away. And I mean by that is we're going to start instituting a locked door policy. One of the problems is, is and I will admit, it's because people thought um, that the neighborhood was secure. Well, first of all, it's, the neighborhood is not secure. Um, people can walk in and out of that house whenever they want. None of the rooms have locks on the doors except one. And those people are going to go ahead and start rifling through your stuff looking for anything that they can fence. In the case of the in the case of the Alcatel One Touch Evolve Two, it was never activated, so therefore they can easily say it's a new phone. But Crooks, why didn't you take the charger that was plugged into the power strip? It was right there, right next to the phone. You mean to tell me you couldn't have grabbed the charger and didn't you see the box over on the other side of the bed? Gee, I would have grabbed all three and ran. That's exactly what I would have done if I was a dishonest person. I would have seen that charger, grabbed that thing. I would have seen the box, grabbed that thing, and then I would have ran. That's exactly what I would do. Um... But that's me. Um, I'd like to phone it off that I really was very, very disappointed that someone took it because I just found out that there is a software program to make it possible for many Android devices on the Android side of the system to negotiate with iPhoto on the Mac to properly import photos and videos from your Android device. It's called, was it DCIM Friend or something? Um, I'm really was gonna, I was really excited. I wanted to go downstairs and, and get my phone and activate that software and see if it would work to find out that the phone was not there. Um, because, well, I, let, let me explain some of the story. Michelle was going to take the phone with her to the sip kitchen this morning, but I told her that since there was no practical way to maintain both phones simultaneously, um, because the battery would run down really fast if you tether through Bluetooth, 
um, she decided to take her iPhone 3GS with her to the soup kitchen and left the Alcatel One Touch uh, evolved here at home, not there in her bed. At least we thought it was near her bed. Michelle did wonder if maybe she put it in her purse, but obviously, um, upon retrospect, we realized that was not the case. Just as Another circumstance, and this one is definitely more possibility of anything. Michelle had taken some money out of the ATM from her credit card because uh, one of the housemates wanted to buy um, some transportation to go see the family. And so um, she took out uh, $10. The ATM only gave out multiples of 20. So she went to the, cash, she went to the bank's cashier and got the housemate to ten dollars and then she also asked for two fives and then she remembers i think she said she shoved the money in her bra yeah okay like that's michelle for you that's what michelle does um which unfortunately it's not really the best place but that's not the point in fact that might be the point though okay yeah see so because michelle went over to cvs and um she wanted to see how much CVS was charging the um, um, micro, what is it, uh, micro SD, micro SD storage modules for phones. And she saw the prices were very high, and so she didn't buy one. Um, she was going to buy it with some of the money that she had in cash, but obviously it was not an option. So then she came back to her house, laid on in her bed for a while, wanted to put the money away in a safe place or maybe to go get some snacks and I couldn't because I couldn't find, couldn't find five to ten dollars. So she ended up basically just kind of shaking her head going, I don't know where I could have put it. So she walked down to um, CVS. She retraced all her steps and everything and she still couldn't find the money. Um, and Michelle did not go to McDonald's that day. No, I didn't. Okay, now the same thing with the Alcatel One Touch evolve, except the fact is, is that we do know, and yes, we do know, because Michelle did not take it with her, that that phone was in that room and it is not there anymore. And you know what's scary? What's that? It was plugged into the charger. Yes, and you know what? That's even more weird. Why would? I mean, how hard would it be for a crook to see that the charger, the phone was plugged into the charger? and grab the charger in the phone at the same time. Uh, they didn't, right? So I ended up basically having to buy another one in that <sighs> this month is gonna be painfully expensive on payments to PayPal credit. Yes, it is. Okay, now, by the way, speaking of PayPal, we got the situation with the bank straightened out. Yes, we did. Michelle, uh, that's how Michelle went back to the house in the first place, is after she had talked with Bet at the bank she went back to the house and um, contacted PayPal at Beth Platt's suggestion to explain the bank's policy regarding the overdraft fee and um, so of course they weren't too sure what they could do so Michelle very smartly connected the bank's manage, branch manager on the phone with the lady from PayPal and it was decided that since the transaction purchase from CVS was a legitimate purchase, that Michelle will have to pay the $58.99, but will not be hit with a $35 overdraft fee. So that's the good news. Yeah, that's the good news. But the problem is, is that all these situations with phones being stolen, yada, 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 yada. By the way, I'm going to be very, very livid if I find my iPhone 4 is, is gone. You know, that's a very good fear. I, I think I can agree with you on that. Um, so the first question is, what can you do to prevent that from happening? Well, I think that once we get the phone and it's all set and it's activated, what we're going to do is we're going to put the iPhone 3GS in a safe place here um, because there won't be no SIM chip in it. And we will use the iPhone 4S, um, keep it out of hand, like in a person, we keep the iPhone 3GS. 
right. And then, of course, that would mean that the phone will be safely in your possession. We hope. Yes, we hope. Okay. Now, I also wanted to explain, if you watched the last few videos, um, since we got the new studio set up, you probably may have noticed that the, um, the colors have been a little bit off. And I wanted to first of all apologize for that. Um, that because things are a new, um, the set lighting's different in part because the wall material, this wall has a habit of making me a little more reddish in color. I don't know how that is because they were using a fixed um, light balance on the camera, but it seems to be the case. Another thing Michelle had done is that she had the camera set too dark on the exposure. Yes, that's probably possibly part of it. And then I tried to correct it afterwards by tuning tuning up the brightness in I, I, I mean in Final Cut Express, which unfortunately had a habit of really. Um, really, really making the colors really, really saturated and just look awful. So we'll try this time. The more closer to this theater does we used to do it and see if it finally looks better. Okay. Now, um, so let's talk about a couple of things that we, you know, we'd like to talk about things, but we'd like to talk to you too, the audience. So obviously we're going to talk about, um, what kind of things does the audience really want us to talk about? Yeah, that's a great question. I haven't heard anybody say anything good or bad or ugly about what to talk about. And, uh, yeah, I know I keep forgetting to take this down. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Here's a good deal with that thing, there. What? When that thing's behind you, you always have that kind of a reference. Yeah, but, uh, you know, it's really kind of embarrassing. Yeah, okay, I'll give you that. Okay. Um, all right, so let's get to the next question. Um... So what kinds of things do you think the audience want to know? They haven't told me. I don't know what they want because no one said anything. I read the mail every day and I do not see a message from anyone about topics that you would like to discuss. And, you know, I've been open about it and I said, look, I would love to talk about the topics that you want to talk about. If you tell me what you want to talk about, we'll talk about it. But no one has said a word. Right. What I'm about to ask is anything. Is there any new questions coming? No. No new questions. Okay. Um. What do you think of the it's going to be like to finally be back here full time. Well, you know, um, we're kind of back here full time now in a sense that we're hopping between two places. And that's obviously a reason why it would be so easy for some crook to come steal things out of my room. Because unfortunately, the problem was the landlord only gave me the keys. He didn't give the other people the keys. Was he originally thinking about originally just having you stay in the house by yourself? Yes, he was, and I, I felt that was a little bit too much house for me, and I felt it would be appropriate to share the house with others. And so, um, instead of, because originally the landlord was going to have those family members go to his other buildings in Massachusetts, and they didn't want to go because um, they felt that it would be too much of a bother to go all the way over to um, Massachusetts. So they, I said to them nicely because I knew the family. I said, "Why don't you come on into the house? I've got there's three rooms. Um, you can go ahead and you can stay in the rooms. There's the great room upstairs, which would be big enough for you guys, and there's a, another two rooms. It would be good for other members of the family to stay in. So and and I and they said, okay, that sounds great. So that's what they did. They they came in, and um, we all been staying together in the house, and. Um, I think it was a wonderful thing. I, I think you're right. What are you trying to do? Uh, I don't know. Just trying to see if I can get things. Ah, rocking it. 
<laughs> You're stretching the plastic bag. I know. Nervous? No, not really. Yes, you are. Uh, no, I'm not nervous about the video. Oh, I know that. Um, uh, I, I guess, yeah, I am a little nervous. Um, because tomorrow is going to be, there's so many possible things coming in for packages tomorrow. I haven't got everything all together. I'm really excited for the iPhone 4 i I'm really hoping that it's going to go well. I've just been, you know, sitting on pins and needles, waiting, to, and watching the, the tracking information as it goes through the system like a snail's pace. And I want to make sure that the phone arrives at its final destination, which is my hot grubby little paw. And that's what I want, because I want to get that phone activated, because I, it's been looking forward to it for you. For, ever since I saw the iPhone 4S with Siri, I wanted one. Um, I really never was interested in iPhone 4, so I never really got into iPhone 4. Um, but the iPhone 4S was to me was just like my the most special thing. It was like it's I fell in love with the concept of Siri, and and I still love that concept of Siri because. Um, I also found that the iPhone 3GS also has some basic ability to read speech. Now, um, that part isn't so new, um, but if you select and you have it set up in the accessibility, you can select a, 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 some pages of or a few lines of text and the voice, which is probably done by the same lady that does Siri, which is Susan Bennett here in the United States. Yeah. Okay. That voice will then read the text. But, unfortunately, when it reads my name, it changes to a French voice. Oh my god. Yeah, it changes to a French voice. So all of a sudden, you get, instead of saying Michelle Marie Delaney, you'll say, Michelle, what was it? Uh, Michelle Marie uh, Marie Delaney. Uh, so it's like not even Italian, it's French. Okay, yeah, that's confusing at all. That's confusing. Um, but it's it's still pretty cool. I showed it with one lady I talked to today, um, which is one of the staff members at a local group home um, for people through Department of Mental Retardation. Um, and she also had a Down Syndrome uh, housemate there. Um, I didn't really get a chance to talk to the housemate. Um, but I do know that this individual um, was um, really kind of, um, he was, at first he was getting a little bit, um, he seemed like he was a little agitated. He was, you know, doing like a lot of people who have Asperger's do, he was kind of self-stimming, which is something that I do, which um, Michelle does it. She's always fingering things like plastic bags and trying to put plastic bags and, and Horrible hot spots. Okay, yeah, that's self-stimming. Um, that's exactly what I was doing. And, and I'm not going to lie about it. Right. It gave you comfort. Yes, it does. Okay. So, anyway, the point is, it, um, is I showed um, Teresa um, my iPhone. And all of a sudden, um, the young man with the Down syndrome felt quiet as he was watching the iPhone and he was watching how it was reading text and how we were able to access the internet through with no wires at all. Now, I have to be honest, um, if I had a, 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 a disability like that um, or even like if I had uh, autism, um, lower functioning autistic um, syndrome behavior, I probably would have been just as enamored to realize that this black device, which is the iPhone 3GS has the case, um, is able to, out of the blue, access internet and, and to do all this stuff. The individual was absolutely wrapped on that screen. Um, he was mesmerized. 
Now, people with Down syndrome are not stupid. I'm not going to lie. They're not stupid. They have problems like we do. Asperger's people, Aspies have problems too. So, you know, we try to be understanding to be other people with pervasive developmental issues because we all have problems, okay? Some of us do better with them than others, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong if you have an issue such as Down syndrome or Asperger's or autism or Crohn's disease, which is a digestive disorder, or diabetes, or high blood pressure, or low blood pressure, or uh, mental retardation. It's okay. You're not alone. You are just one of the many, many people on this earth who have that issue. And you don't have to feel like you are an alien, okay? Because you're not. All right, that's a fact. I happen to have Asperger's. When I was first diagnosed with Asperger's, of course, my Asperger's, well, it's the first thing I did. I sat down on my computer and I looked up Asperger's. I went through and dug up as much information about my condition as I could so that I could understand where I fit in this world of, you know, conditions. And I'm a high-functioning autistic. That's what, that's what now Asperger's is considered. It's not quite the same as... Uh, it is autistic spectrum, but it's not the... No, I mean, no. It does have some of the traits of autism, but it doesn't have all the traits. Okay? That's one of the reasons why some Aspie sufferers get really, really, really angry at the American Psychiatric Association by removing the diagnosis of Asperger's and trying to clump everything together on the autistic spectrum. But uh, I'm not one of those, I mean, let's put it this way, you know, it's it's just a label, and you know, as well as I do, that labels don't really mean shit anyway. They really don't, okay? I mean, I could call myself one thing, and, and someone else could say I'm something else. Okay, fine. If that's your choice. It's your opinion. You want to say this? If you want to call me a flaming asshole, that's fine. I don't consider myself a flaming asshole. I consider myself to be a pretty decent person. That sometimes, because of my Asperger's, I freak out and panic and and say stupid things, and it, it makes me, you know, makes me, you know, make my flesh crawl. But okay, uh, that's another piece of information for you for the Ask Us Anything. Yeah, you know what? We haven't really talked about you know some other things in life. Well, let's see. We've talked about my budget this month. Yes, we did. We talked about um, the things that we're buying with the PayPal credit. Yes, we did. We talked about what it's like to live in the house downstairs. Yes, we did. We talked about um, the frustrations. Yes, we did. Okay. I can't think of anything that I and you have not talked about. Um, really, we I I can't think of anything either. I'm sure someone's gonna say somebody needs to say something. Okay, yeah, maybe you will, guys. Yeah, hey, here's the deal. I'm being honest when I say it. Okay, you got something to say? Uh, let's talk about it. Shell's playing with plastic again. Oh, shut up. Um, yeah, I am. I'm just... Ah! You like, you like... No, actually, the reason I'm doing it is I'm not see if we can take the same ollie in the bag. So, well, forget it. It won't fit. No, it doesn't. Oh, this is something to keep it clean. Wow, you ripped the bag anyway. Yeah, I did. Okay, so anyway, the whole point is, is that, um... All this new stuff that we do every day, and we've been doing, experimenting with new technology and coping with all this stuff. It's, it's just, it's just a challenge to to do the things that I do every day. So, what's your plan for the next few days? Uh, the next few days depends on a variety of things. Um, from the fact is, is number one, how hot it's going to be tomorrow. I didn't look at the weather before I came on to give you a definitive answer. However, given the fact that 
um, we will probably be more than likely be moving back in here to the house really soon. I'm going to consider putting the, packing the computer up that's downstairs and bring it back up here and put it away and then go ahead um, and start um, breaking down the house and start bringing things back up here so that we can start getting our main home back to being home. Um, oh, I thought something. What? What did you find out about the, the, um, the Mythbusters? Oh, yes. Um, Mythbusters is going to be starting a new season um, around September. As same as Once Upon a Time will also be starting a new season this year as well. Around September 1st, I believe. Um, so, of course, I want to see what's going to happen now that Emma Swan has become the dark one. And I want to know how it's how she handles having so much concentrated evil in her heart and uh, her heart has become black. Um, oh, we know that's enough topic we didn't talk about. What? Oh, that. Yeah. yeah. You know why I don't talk about them? Why? Because it still scares me a lot. You see, what Wilmy was going to ask you about is how can we never talk about evil, being evil? And what I experienced when I was allowed to taste evil. Well, first of all, it was so scary. I don't want to talk about it because it really, really, um, it's really, really an emotional thing. And it really raises my anxiety levels big time. And I just don't want to go back and dwell on those feelings, okay? And it's not because I don't like talking about myself. It's because what I experienced when I was given just a test, just a taste of evil, how much emotional trauma that it had done to my psyche. And that was only just a taste. I was not even fully being um, dipped in the most evil incarnate as obviously Emma Swan has now been dipped into in the darkest of darkest evil. Um, so um, it's going to be very scary for her um, make time. And, um, and that's something to think about. Um, Dory, by the way, uh, and I um, are going to be hopefully when the department is back uh, Sabbath again, we will be back up here and me and her uh, will be spending some time together. It turns out that there's another housemate that also has uh, an attraction to me as well. And of course, I don't know if I'm really ready for that at this point. But you know what? I'm going to tell you something. Um, it's it's it's, it's, it's to be, it's in my life chart, and I will try to keep all channel healing frequencies open, Captain, because I have no idea what I'm going to be expecting. Um, my life chart is a work in progress. My life chart, there is map that has been predefined, it's been pre, pre-written. I just got to, you know, like everybody else, feel my way through it and just try to um, adjust to um, you know things I feel and see around me. Um, that's and this is hard to believe, but it's true that I am not the kind of person that worries about um, getting into um, some of the stuff that I see around me. I'm not into drugs. I see a lot of drugs. I see a lot of alcohol, which is a drug. I see lots of tobacco, that's a drug. I see lots of illegal drugs. I see marijuana, which is semi-illegal. Uh, depending on who you talk to, I'm not going to go into the law there and just leave it alone for now me. Um, but the point is, is I also see a lot of people struggling to cope with their day-by-day -day lives, just as I am. Some people do better than others, and those who do better are... Um, 
much much to be admired for finding a non-addictive way to cope with the issues in their lives without depending on a substance prescribed or not prescribed. Um, it takes a lot of um, determination and guts and uh, to pull through some tough times. And Lum, you will know that I have been through a lot since April. Yeah, she has been. We both have. You know, between being in a hotel in April to for a short time coming back here uh, for a few months to then being retossed back into the yellow house um, and then finding, you know, that we've been in the yellow house officially um, full time now since around May, June, June, right, okay, June, and sleeping on that floor and experiencing um, the, you know, the anxieties of watching um, are all of our carefully laid plans as well. Lee Coyote was a go follow. We've seen, Michelle has seen happen where, you know, she's, you know, had to, you know, temporarily uproot her entire self. And for anybody with Asperger's, that is not an easy thing to do. No, it's not. People with Asperger's are very rigid. They are, they have a routine. They like to stick with that routine. Um, it almost, in some cases, it almost borders on obsessive compulsive, but not always. Some people with Asperger's will adjust, um, but they will be very unhappy for quite a while. I realized this was temporary, and I said to myself, it's, I got to just take it easy and see if it's going to work out for me. Right now, I can't do anything about the issues in my life. I just got to try to just take things one day at a time. And one of the things that I wanted to do, as I've been doing, trying to do, is to keep busy in, in trying new products and new concepts and new ideas. Uh, even if sometimes it seems like it's a bunch of folly. Um, it's still a wonderful thing to be able to do that and to research things. Thank you. Um, now, um, as I've said, we're going to get ready to wrap this up for the time being. But what I would like to ask you, and Lynn, would you, would you agree with me on this? I agree with you. Want to say it together? <clears throat> Please do not forget to like or dislike. Share with everybody subscribe because it helps us big time big time to know who is interested in our topics and if you have comments please comment in the comment section below if we will do our best to answer their questions comments and concerns that you ask us always always so for now guys talk to you soon bye bye everybody bye bye guys hey did you know there's a lot more going on right now at our rate websites are you watching all four of them if not check them out there's a list right here we got three youtube channels and one audio only channel for your enjoyment so come on and dig in and see all the stuff we do here at the North American Snow Queen Palace.